My name is Petra Firstra and I'm an explorer in the quantum world. This field is so exciting because there is so much unknown about it and until we've explored and really understand it, we can't even comprehend what technologies might come out of it. So just like the laser, when it was invented, no one really knew what it would be good for. They thought maybe in some really scientific labs it would be used, but that would be the end. Yet now we see it in all of the technology around us. It makes the internet run, it's in our cell phones, we have laser eye surgery. So once we fully understand this quantum world, the possibilities that come from it will be just as limitless. We've known about the quantum world for so long, but haven't had the technology we need to explore it. Actually in 1924, Bose and Einstein were able to theoretically predict a new state of matter that would occur if we cooled atoms down to almost absolute zero. And this is the state of matter where a lot of these quantum experiments happen these days. But it wasn't until 1995, 70 years later, once we had the laser, that a Bose-Einstein condensate was actually able to be made. Because of the large number of scientists working in the quantum realm here in New Zealand, it's a really amazing place to continue this research because we've got that critical mass that allows us to be at the forefront of this research. So I'm doing my PhD here at Otago University with Rob Ballot and Blair Blakey. And my PhD is purely theoretical, so I'm building models to try and understand how atom and light interacts. Theoretical physics is like building a computer game. And in that computer game, you put all the rules that you know of the world into it. And you run that game and you see where things end up. And you will then compare that to the experimentalists who have looked at the real world and see if you get the same outcome. In my research, I look at a cloud of atoms where we shine a laser onto them. And every atom in that cloud can grab onto a piece of the laser and get really excited while it has that light. And eventually it will then just spit it back out again and go back to its ground or unexcited state. And the complexity comes because every atom could either grab a bit of the laser or a bit of the light that was spat out by one of the other atoms. So they all become really intertwined. That means that instead of just looking at one atom and modeling that atom, we have to look at them all at once and we have to consider how every atom interacts with every single other atom as well as the laser to understand the system properly. So on my computer, I can only solve up to three atoms. If I got all the computers in the world together and made one supercomputer, I'd only be allowed up to nine, so it's really bad scaling with your number of atoms. For comparison, a grain of sand has 10 to the 19 atoms in it, so that is a one followed by 19 zeros. There is a few different ways. One way is to just have a very small system of two or three atoms, which we can solve perfectly. The other option is to lower the laser intensity down so that maybe only one or two of the atoms is ever going to be excited, it's ever going to be holding on to the light. And I've been looking at how we could make other approximations which would allow us to have a higher laser intensity but also a large number of atoms. The more atoms that we can simulate, the more likely we can connect to experiment and also the more likely we can eventually down the road connect with new technologies. So I'm working on a collaboration with prominent scientists in America as well as France and that's been a really cool opportunity to compare my theory directly to an experiment and to get to work with some really first class people in the world. As a scientist it's really important to be connected and presenting your ideas and discussing your ideas with other scientists. And because of the Dodd Wall Centre that's helped to build that really vibrant community here in New Zealand and it means that there is regular conferences and get-togethers that we can go to and share our ideas, as well as meaning if we want to go overseas and talk to people in other countries, we've also got the funding available to do that.